Now, one thing that we would like to do is to spend time on linear processes, not nonlinear processes. So one definition, rather generic, is that we can write a linear stochastic process, yt, with a mean value mu, and we define it as the infinite sum from i equals zero to infinity of some psi weights and some epsilons relative to time t. So with this particular notation, what we have is that we have, say, the most current observation is the infinite sum of all the previous epsilons. That's why we have this time index here. What we assume is that epsilon t is white noise, which means that they are uncorrelated, as in independently, identically distributed, or just IID. And what we'll typically do is that we will scale by choosing the variance of epsilon such that psi zero is equal to one, because otherwise we ha have one too many degrees of freedom to estimate. Now, and without loss of generality, as I mentioned before, we will generally assume that mu is equal to zero, but pretty much everything can be done with mu different from zero as well. In practice, if you have a structure like this and you know mu, you just subtract it, and then you define a new stochastic variable, say set equal yt, set t equal yt minus mu, and then the mean value is zero. And then we proceed as if mu was equal to zero. How we define it, and I will write it without the mu, is the infinite sum i equals to zero to infinity of psi i multiplied on epsilon t minus i. So that's the generic definition of a linear process, a stochastic process. Now, what we looked at last time was the so-called backward shift operator, B. We have it here. And if we look at this, what we have here, I go from i equal 1 to infinity before we started from 0, but I go from 1 and then I have it just the operator 1 as a leading term here, which is equivalent to what we did on the previous slide, namely to, to assume that psi 0 is equal to 1. With this operator polynomial, we can write it, the process, like this. Because you have the infinite sum here, and the backward shift operator will give you exactly what we have, exactly what we have out here at this term here. So that's the first part. We can also define the inverse operator if it ex exists, so that rather than having the infinite polynomial operator applied on epsilon, then we can apply it on y t. So you have both formulations, you have a forward time with a psi polynomial and you have an inverse polynomial with pi. So if we look at the autocovariance using psi weights, as listed up there, then what we have to look at is the covariance between this infinite sum and a time like k, I will typically use k as it's an integer, time shift, time steps. So here we have the process yt, and here we have yt plus k. So all the epsilons are shifted k steps. So how do we get to this conclusion out here? The first thing to keep in mind is that these epsilons here, they are iid which means they are independent and identically distributed. So what we have is if we have, let's start with yt plus k. If we write out what that is, then we have psi zero epsilon t plus k plus, and then at some point, Every time we increase psi by 1, 
then we decrease the time step by one as well. So what we'll get to is at some point psi k times epsilon t and then plus psi k plus 1 epsilon t minus 1 plus and then it goes on to infinity or to time 0. But let's just leave it there and then we just say that we have a lot of extra terms out there. If we then also write yt, what does that include? Well, it doesn't contain any of the future epsilons. What it does include is a psi 0 on epsilon t plus a psi 1 on epsilon t minus 1 plus and then all the old ones there. So now what we have to do at per definition we have to look at the covariance here but since the epsilons are independent we only get a contribution when we have the same time index which is also why I've written it like this over here. So uh, when I get to the covariance between yt and yt plus k, what I get for epsilon t, the I get the variance of that, that is a sigma square. That comes for all the, the elements here. So I'll take that outside of parentheses. And then I have a psi 0 multiplied by a psi k plus, and then I have a psi 1 multiplied by a psi k plus 1. And then I'll get the same structure all the way out. So I have the product of the size with a k difference and summed for all positive value uh, indices of the first element there. Which is also what is written out here. From i equals 0 to infinity, I have the product of the, I have the sum of those over psi 0 and psi, sorry, psi i and psi i plus k. So this is how we got to it. Now, as the last bit in the first part here, we look at stationarity and invertibility. A process, a linear process, is said to be stationary if and only if we can look at this polynomial and it converges when the miracle va uh, absolute value of z it can be a complex va number is greater than one. So basically, what that means is that these weights here have to go to zero sufficiently fast so that old epsilons are downweighted. A linear process is going is said to be invertible if the inverse polynomial of the psi, namely the pi polynomial, if that converges in the same sense. So those are the core definitions here. Typically, most of us does not want or like to work too much with infinite polynomials, but that is how things are. You start somewhere, and then in the later part, what we'll do is that we'll restrict ourselves to finite polynomials and look at what does that then mean for what we're doing. <laughs>